called the March 26, 2019 work session of the Portsmouth City Council to order. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Battle. Here. Mr. Clark. Here. Mr. Glover. Mrs. Lucas Burke. Here. Mr. Moody. Here. Ms. Simmons. Here. Mayor Rowe. Here. Dr. Patton. Yes. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of City Council. Tonight, in response to your request, the first presentation will be a review of the Public, Private, Education, and Infrastructure Act, a process utilized to address the unsolicited proposal for the City of Portsmouth City Hall and Public Safety Building. City Attorney Solomon H. Ashby, Jr. will present a review of the process and update on the current status of the PPA process. The second presentation on the other post-employment benefits is a report back from the March 12th presentation and will include a summary of the city's financial obligations to our other post-employment benefits. The last presentation, City Attorney Solomon H. Ashby, Jr. will present a brief update on the General Assembly legislation as it pertains to casino gaming in the city of Portsmouth, Attorney Ashby. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of City Council. Uh, tonight I'm going to review the process by which the city has entertained the unsolicited proposal for a new city hall. And in this discussion, I'm going to cover some of the milestones uh, as they have occurred thus far and have a bit of a discussion of how we move forward. In this discussion, uh, you will see a number of opportunities where uh, throughout this process, which has been almost a year, uh, uh, how the city has presented the opportunities and how the public has been informed along the way. As you all know, the PPEA uh, grants the, uh, public entities the opportunity and authority to create a public-private partnership for the development of a wide range of projects. In this discussion, of course, we're talking about uh, a proposal for a new city hall and a public safety building. The first announcement of uh, the PPEA uh, before the public was May 22nd. And uh, at that point in time, Dr. Patton presented this information to council during a work session. I have one last thing, Mayor and members of council. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of City Council, I am pleased to report that I have received an unsolicited proposal for a new City Hall and public safety building from Amada Hopla. As City Manager, I have accepted the proposal and will proceed in accordance with the Public Private Education Facilities Infrastructure Act, PPEA. During the June 11, 2018 public work session, the City's purchasing administrator will provide a general overview of the PPEA Act as adopted in 2002 and amended by City Council in 2010. A notice will be put will be published in the Virginian Pilot tomorrow. So that was Ashby, the uh, so the notice was pub published? Yes. And it's been in the public domain since um, May of 22nd? So Correct, Mayor. Was it leaked out? It was published? No, it was published, Mayor. Um, as you, You're saying no, it wasn't leaked out. I mean, no, it was not leaked out, correct. Uh, it was published in the public domain uh, on May 23rd, May 27th, and June 3rd. There was an open uh, bid process through July of 2018. Uh, but that wasn't the only notice provided uh, in terms of the written notice. Um, the city did, in fact, uh, come back to city council in June in the midst of the notice process and provide council further update. And I'll just make note, I believe last year, May, that would have been the budget process. And so as you all know, uh, if there's any period of time when council is covered well, 
by the general public and the press. It is, of course, budget season. Uh, but even at this uh, June 12th meeting, uh, we had the second piece of information come to the public uh, as well as to council about that uh, particular meeting. We're going to ask Mr. Michael Ammons if he would be please come forward, who's the city's purchasing officer, and he's going to present an overview of the Virginia Public Private Education Facilities and Infrastructure Act. Mr. Ammons. Now, I, I, we certainly aren't going to go through the entire process. I, I will just share with you uh, some of the slides in this presentation tonight are slides that came out of Mr. Ammons' presentation back in June 12th of 2018. Uh, when he presented the process for the PPEA again uh, as we were in the midst and the opportunity for bids to come in actually uh, existed. So we're, uh, as I said before, notice went out on the tw May 23rd. There were opportunities through July of that month to go forward and the city moved forward with that process. Uh, as the city did in fact go forward, uh, there was another opportunity, uh, and let me just give you a little bit of an overview. Um, as you can see from this slide here, and as we've shown in the videos, May 22nd and May 23rd, uh, those processes and notices were provided to the public. The opportunity existed for folks to submit proposals going forward. Um, and so we moved through that process during that time period. Uh, the next opportunity, of course, was on the 26th of uh, November in 2018, uh, where the administration also came back to city council about another step in the process, shortly after the election of some of our newest council members, as you can see in the rear. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of city council, um, as you are aware, the city of Portsmouth received an unsolicited proposal from the model hopper for the construction of a new Portsmouth City Hall and public safety building on proper property either owned by the city or other entities in May of 2018. The city accepted the proposal and in accordance with the guidelines of the PPEA provided the opportunity for competing proposals from other interested parties. The city received one additional proposal which subsequently uh, was withdrawn by the party that submitted it. Tonight, Mr. Michael Ammons, purchasing officer, will provide the rationale for the city manager's request to city council for internal staff to begin to review and evaluate the accepted proposal. Um, with uh, Mr. Um, Ammons coming forward uh, on the agenda tomorrow night would be a proposal, would be um, a um, resolution in the city manager's report for your consideration. And so that was November 26th work session. On November 27th, uh, City Council entertained that resolution. Agenda item 18447. Brings us to item 18447, which is the consideration of a certain resolution. And Madam Clerk, would you read the caption of the resolution, please? Yes, sir. A resolution directing that an analysis of the proposal received for the construction of a new city hall and a new public safety building be conducted by city staff. And, and so at that point in time, of course, city council acted on that uh, particular resolution, uh, putting in place an internal review committee um, in large part because of the nature of construction, uh, the solicitation or the utilization of outside engineers or other experts would more than likely involve folks who had ties to folks who were proposed or builders. And so uh, the city started with its own internal experts in terms of the staff we have with the expertise uh, with regard to engineering and that sort of information and supplemented uh, have the opportunity to supplement with outside experts, but the genesis of the evaluation will be internal uh, city employees. And so from November 26th of 2018, uh, we fast forward to uh, February 26th of 2018 when Dr. Patton announced the public hearing and resolutions as it relates to the negotiation of our with Armada Hoffler. 
Uh, the expert committee, the internal committee, is in those discussions now. And uh, again, the committee is composed of folks uh, with expertise in various fields necessary to ascertain the city's needs in terms of uh, new structures, assessing the city's current uh, structures and their needs. There are folks who are both sh short tenured and long tenured with the city. And that's important because um, as council knows, there's been a number of issues and concerns about even placement of a new city hall. And so with the folks we have on the internal uh, review committee uh, negotiating this, th they are folks who are both familiar with the fact of when uh, the courthouse was here in the waterfront and the discussions in the community about the economic impact of moving the courthouse down the street. So we have folks that certainly have both understandings in terms of the city hall uh, and government structures as both uh, economic drivers as well as meeting the needs of uh, both pedestrian traffic and citizens who uh, come to city services uh, or city buildings in order to address city services. Um, and so uh, we fully understand that this decision, uh, a new city hall and public safety building, would be uh, a process or a decision that would last 20, 30, 40, 50 years in, uh, uh, in a lifetime of a building or a decision of this uh, uh, magnitude. And so uh, the PPEA provides a couple of opportunities and occasions for public input. Um, now, I, I have to say in order to be clear, there won't necessarily be an opportunity for the public or the city council to pick the drapes that will go into New City Hall, but there are opportunities to weigh in in terms of what we do. Uh, this discussion here, the opportunities that you've seen, the resolutions that have come before the public, uh, those have been opportunities for folks to chime in at some level in terms of what the issues are. In discussing this and preparing for this discussion this evening, um, one of the pivot points in terms of a discussion going forward and a review going forward is uh, whether or not uh, council uh, wants to take a look at this process when the financials are developed in terms of what are the cost expenses how is the financial deal put together mm -hmm. versus how is the structure, say the design, and those sorts of things. Those are certainly two uh, decision points, but they are drastically different in terms of timing. Certainly we will have a discussion about uh, terms and financials very early on, but as I said before, you won't necessarily get the opportunity to pick the drapes and the drafting and the design of the building will come much later in the process. The negotiations is leading to a development agreement that is comprehensive and defines who's going to do what and what the cost is, uh, the location, mm -hmm. the size. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. And, 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 and there is an opportunity for an interim agreement also. So that's why I say there's two opportunities, but certainly you will have um, all of the elements won't necessarily line up at the same time. You could have a good understanding perhaps of the finances, but not have a good understanding, a perfect understanding of the final building or however that process goes forward. Yes, sir. So a, a project um, of this magnitude is, is probably one of the largest undertakings we will participate in in some time. And there's going to be a lot of effort and expense um, made toward this effort. My concern is that, that we are using every means possible uh, to inform our citizens and keep them abreast uh, based on what we're able to do in terms of notification. And what, perhaps you don't have the answer for that, but what is, what is the strategy for that? I understand what you said in regards to the PPA requirements. But, but what is the strategy to make sure um, we have our citizens involved in the steps that will be taking place uh, to make this happen? 
Well, t tonight is one of those uh, opportunities, one in a long list from May 22nd. Uh, I will tell you, uh, let me skip here. Uh, the PPEA Act uh, engrafts certain portions of the Public Procurement Act, which is, of course, a uh, state law with a design to address two elements. One to assure the public that the procurement process is um, above reproach. I'm going to shorthand it a little bit because I know we've got a number of things to go through tonight. But um, it provides a process that is uh, public input and designed for public protection, but does not necessarily give everyone a hand in the process. The design of the PPEA uh, much like the public procurement process, allows for the presentation of materials at various points in time. The proposal, I believe, has been made available. The initial proposal has been made available at one point in time. Uh, it started off with a portion of the proposal being available to the public. I've spoken with Mr. Ammons. I know there were a couple of people who came by to take a look at the proposals at, over time. Where we are now, uh, the next opportunities are those interim agreements. Uh, so that, that, that would be a bit of a public airing for council. And then ultimately, like any procurement, when the process is complete, uh, there are, the vast majority of the elements are made available to the public. Uh, but but you can so that gives you the short, short answer. Hopefully I've answered your question. You did. Thank you. Not only um, am I interested in the public uh, going along uh, every step of the way and the most participation uh, that we can get, as a new council member, I'm kind of apprehensive um, because we, when we are dealing with our budget, we always talk about the money that we have and that we don't have. And is this something that we've made our, put our best foot forward on? Uh, when you say to me that we got a response of one um, developer. Me too. And when you say that to me, was it something we did or we're not doing or we're not putting out adver enough advertisement or is this just uh, enough to wrap the package up? You, you see what I'm saying? So as a new council member, I'm very, very, very apprehensive about this process and keeping it nice and slow, or maybe even going back, admitting we made a mistake and we didn't get enough people to uh, uh, get into the process. We erred with our advertisement. We didn't make, you see what I'm saying? When you tell me one person and they didn't, they later backed out, that, that, that doesn't taste good to me and my constituents. Dr. Pat. Yes, uh, uh, Councilman Battle, this is a uh, unsolicited, the city, this, this whole process that Mr. Ashby is explaining, the uh, Public Private Education Act, um, city staff in a public private Education Act does not solicit proposals. I, I understand. Okay. But whether it was unsolicited or solicited, it would be solicited. Maybe we need to kind of rethink this process and um, uh, look at it more, which would add the the input and the eyes and ears of the new council members rather than putting us up to speed with something that has already uh, seeming to me been kind of rushed through 
not in the reference to time, I mean by in reference to involvement, involvement of all parties, parties involved in, in the situation. Again, when we talk about our budget, we talk about the lack of what we don't have. And maybe we need to s slow up. Okay, uh, Elizabeth? Well, I think um, you, you, you as a new councilman don't know any more or less about this project than the other five of us sitting here. We don't know because we have not yet negotiated what this is. So there's there's nothing to not know yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I know that the newspaper, yeah. the day after we mentioned the project, knew much more than I did. No, they, they made a lot of that up. Don't ever <laughs> believe what you read in the newspaper. Oh, okay. That's um, nothing. So we're just at the well, maybe starting we need, to talk about it. Maybe we need to get on them for about that. We didn't complain. We, we've been doing that for yes. 100 years. We, we didn't discuss it among one another. We allowed ourselves to get to this point because we didn't say that the Virginia pilot and legislator was not telling the truth. We have to follow in this. We got to get sharper than this. Good point, Paul. Mm -hmm. um, and that message has been said many times before mm -hmm. to no avail. Um, it's amazing what doesn't get reported. For example, uh, in February 2017, council made the decision to close Willett Hall. Not one article came out in 2017 about that. Not one article came out in 2018. And for those of you that are there, am I, am I misstating the case? No. But I love that, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, well, I, I hear you. Uh, I love that, too. Um, on May 22nd, um, you would think that it would be news anywhere, any city, for a developer to come in and say, I want to build you a new city hall. Mm -hmm. The story didn't break until Andy Fox broke it on June 5th, they'll figure that one out. And then it gets reported that we leaked this out. That's why I raised that point. I mean, this isn't the bit of the public domain. So what's, been in public what's been articulated is what we articulated as a council last meeting, which was to tell staff and the public that we wanted a process that had full particip participation from the public. We're just at the starting box on this project we are. now. We get a chance to say no at any time in the future mm -hmm. or say turn left or turn right. But I'm not comfortable with one developer making a proposal and us as a city of a 700 plus billion dollar budget can only turn to that developer in the process and only have one person who backed out. That ship has sailed. This Re council's already voted for that. All right. Well, that's Bill's, what I'm trying to do, slow the ship down. Bill's asked for the form. Bill's got the Paul, form. Paul, I, th I think some of your concern is really addressed in the act itself, the PPEA uh, Act. Follow the map. That uh, <coughs> without that, uh, you, would, you would, there would be concerns that uh, whose proposal is getting looked at and who's getting thrown in the, the round file. Uh, this act means that. Uh, it removes any possibility of impropriety or, uh, you know, the system being partial towards uh, a particular developer. So uh, this uh, this lays down the ground rules and it's, uh, it's law and the procedures are backed by law and they have to be followed. That's not what I'm saying. 
I'm saying what we're doing now is going through a procedural situation where the procedure has to be done properly. That's not it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I've been elected because in the past, with the PPA and all the other part partnerships that we get into, the city of Portsmouth is always, and I'm saying always, at the tail end in reference to it not being a quick pro quo with the deal. And that's, I, I'm here to make sure that this does not continue. And when we bring something like this to the council, I just don't be it, feel easy because it's the start of something that doesn't smell good. Now, I won't go in the past and let you know about all the different deals that we've been behind with the PPA and everybody else. I'm, I'm not going to do that because it's the waste of our time. We know that. All I want is the best possible participation, not only from the citizens, from those contractors, <clears throat> uh, as many as we can get. Why? To get the best deal for our citizenry. And one contractor and one making the process right and then saying, oh, no, we're going. We're not going to do this. I'm just trying to look out for my constituents. All your points are good. Your Thank constituents you. are our constituents. We all represent the same people. We don't represent sections of the city. No, I, that's and, my and, constituents are the city of Portsmouth. That's, that's, that's what you're saying. Yeah, citizens. but right. you, you said something else. Oh, no. When you say, say that it's not a... That's not what I said. We all represent the citizens. That's what I said. And that's my citizens. I said your citizens. constituents yes, are sir. our constituents. Yes, sir. Okay, that's what I said. Yes, sir. My question is, have we ever had a PPEA before? We have. I believe the um, social services building was a uh, PPEA. The behavior, behavior health? Social, social services yeah. building okay. was no, a PPEA. I know. It was behavior social services. Health. Social, social services. Yeah. Also. No, that was bad. That's bad. Yeah. Well, let me say it a little better. Yeah. All public-private <laughs> partnerships that we've engaged in, we haven't been, uh, um, we haven't done good jobs. But the PPA, the Z, 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 X, whatever it is, we haven't done a good job well, let, let, in, the, in, the, in the history of our city. Sir, uh, let, let, let me uh, posit a couple of things to you about this particular configuration of the internal committee. Um, because as I said before, we have short tenured and long, long tenured individuals with various expertise. We certainly have optimistic individuals and we have folks who are very, um, what I would call very astute in terms of making sure this deal happens. We have folks who have had both good experiences and bad experiences, which I will su submit to you is the kind of scrutiny you want for any kind of deal. And while it is true, when you get to an, uh, a project of this magnitude that's being presented, th there are not a lot of folks who can chime in. Uh, but what you have the opportunity in this process is to scrutinize that deal as we present it and determine if it works for the city. So this is not the end of the process. Mm -hmm. This is a step along the process. And much like your concerns, uh, Councilman Battle, the reason we go through this process right now and reiterate these points, and your concerns are being voiced publicly, they're being voiced in a arena where the committee can take on those concerns and uh, 
championing them in terms of making sure that we have the best product, be it uh, individuals out of the legal department as well as the other individuals. Um, and I would just simply submit to you that when you get to projects of a particular size, um, you do end up with a smaller pool of applicants because of the nature and the dollar uh, involved, as well as schedules. You know, you, you can have significant, you know, you can have significantly large companies that are otherwise tied up and don't have uh, an interest at that particular time. So that can be an issue also. But I don't, uh, as you saw from the clip of Dr. Patton, um, the opportunity was laid out in accordance with the law. Uh, the reason I put this slide here in particular is because the PPEA and the Public Procurement Act is meant to both uh, protect the public integrity, but it's also meant to limit certain uh, individuals from uh, influencing the process in a way that might lend itself to a question of manipulating public procurement for goods, services, and construction. So it is a balance. It's not perfection. <clears throat> Certainly folks have different perceptions of what their role is in terms of protecting the public interest. Uh, I would submit to you that's why the law kind of sets out the parameters so that we all are operating on the same uh, standard. Just to follow, make sure that, that, that the process um, as I understand it, with the PPA and the Act, um, um, two developers were in the in the pot, and Ahmed uh rose to the top. The other developer backed out. So now we're at the point where Ahmed Hoffler is the one that we make our deals with on, as far as how much our building will be, what kind of construction materials. That was what we do as a council. But at what point does the public get to? Um, come in and speak to the mic at, during public hearing or during what kind of um, process do they get to weigh in or say at this location or not here or further inland or where does that happen in this process? Well, certainly to the extent that folks are making those comments and you are aware of them, like I said this evening, this is the opportunity. When you have an interim agreement, you will have a uh, resolution and that will come back before council again. Again, that's another public opportunity. When you go forward, uh, if that interim agreement then uh, results in a, what we call a final agreement, again, that has to be approved and that will be another public opportunity. But the elements of that will come together and that's what the committee is developing in terms of all of those issues. I will, I will speak into the, your particular point about location. As you all know, the, the notice provided uh, two particular locations as well as it had the catch-all phrase, any other property that the city owns. Mm -hmm. The reason we do that is because, of course, one, there's the efficiencies in terms of where do we develop this project, but two, uh, there's a cost every time you try to propose a project in a particular place. And so you have to have some limit on it, otherwise we, we would be sitting around, uh, the expense on anyone's part would be astronomical if we try to place City Hall or prepare a plan to place City Hall on every piece of property the city owns. I have a question. Um, first, this was unsolicited. We didn't advertise, it just mm -hmm. dropped into our lap. No Sir. Yes. When mm -hmm. it dropped into our lap, it had a location specified. Is that yes. a correct, correct assumption? Mm -hmm. Correct. So from mm -hmm. May 22nd, it's the, the location being proposed has been before us and the public. The question would be, and it's a fair question, is that the right location? Mm -hmm. I, no one said, right. and Anything. certainly had a public hearing on this last time. Mm -hmm. I don't remember anybody saying, don't do it there. Did, Am I missing something? No, that I know of, Mayor. Again, oh. nothing drops in your lap. That that's that's not true. <laughs> when, a, when somebody put in a bid like this, uh, and then we as a city 
at that point decide that we want to put a bid out. And at that point, we put the put the bid process out. We get one person, <clears throat> they back out, and then we'll stop with something. They didn't drop in our lap. They they persuaded us to move in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. So all of this smells nefarious. Well, Paul. To to the to the just the, the public at large, just looking at this. We have yet to met. So, when I dealt with the procurement process, I don't know whether it's changed or not. If we didn't get the amount of participation we wanted, we're going to go longer than 30 days. But when you close something up in 30 days, the first thing the public's going to say, my God, so what, this is a neat little package? I am just want to be cautious here. And um, we'll put, put something voice, forward. Voice my opinion. Okay. What do you want us to do? What would you uh, want us to do? Put something on the table you, that we can talk you, about. With the parameters that we just discussed, what should we do? You're the mayor. What what should we do? What all of us? What did we think we should do? Have we rushed in this thing, or do we need to put it back out for bid? What, yeah. what should we do? Okay. You're asking the questions. Oh. What should we do? Well, get me up to the next meeting, and I'll make some type of proposal for us. Anybody want to respond? This council already took a unanimous vote to yeah. go forward with this project. And this is and what, speak in and, one and, voice. and you hear what you're just saying? And when we took this vote, I said that this does not mean that we're going. But yes, we were unanimous. But now you're saying we did it and we're going forward. See, I don't want to make that same mistake. That's why I'm at this point. And by being new, and yes, you, yes you could you push me put out there. to the first point. Okay, Paul, okay. are you asking us to pause this? Yes, please. Okay, well, let's get a consensus on that. All right, the question that Paul's put on the table is whether or not we should pause where we are and stop this particular process. So let's start, and we'll start with Shannon. I think based on the information, what I've reviewed, I think I'm comfortable with moving forward. Okay. Moving forward. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Oh. I've done my best, best Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and the goal is is to get the best deal with the greatest amount of public participation. Is mm -hmm. that not correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Well, I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have that. Not it wasn't required Mayor, at but that. Not one. because of our but there you are. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council, and so as the committee moves forward in terms of uh, addressing any of a number of elements going forward, we will come back to you uh, in a future meeting uh, to discuss uh, negotiated points yes. and give you all a more comprehensive uh, picture of where the negotiations are as we move along in this process. Uh, certainly, we will provide you some uh, updates, uh, or if there are positive questions that need to be addressed, those will certainly be addressed uh, internally first. And then, as I said before, we'll bring you all uh, those opportunities for the public to see where we are in the mm -hmm. process and determine how the council wants to move forward. Any questions? Yes. No comments. No. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Mrs. Ah. Gooden. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and members of City Council. 
my presentation tonight, which can be better described as a summary of two of our other post-employment benefits from last week's um, public work session is what we're going to speak about. Um, pretty much in summary, I want to say in addition to our retiree health insurance and our spouse health insurance that we offer to um, our retirees who um, participate in our HR plan, that would be the spouses um, of those retirees who are less than 65. We currently, as we talked about last week, we currently offer our retirement allowance, which is a $200 monthly um, allowance to our retirees who are under the age of 65. As discussed in some of our previous presentations from the public work session, for fiscal year um, 2019, the city's annual contribution or expense of that would have been $570,000. That goes away after they turn 65? Yes, yes. sir. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, um, we also offer a health reimbursement account. Um, we offer that for our retirees um, who were on our, at one point in time, for all members of, of council, at one point in time we offered retiree health insurance for retirees both under 65 and also above the age of 65. I believe back in 2015 we actually um, decided to um, transition and get away from offering retiree health benefits, those retirees over the age of 65. We replaced it with a health reimbursement account. These retirees, it's approximately about 200 185 of them. They actually receive a um, contribution at the beginning of the plan year, which runs January 1st through December 31st. They actually get $1,400 annually that they can use that to help pay offset expenses as it relates to any claims or any premiums if they do what we refer to as a Medicare supplement or a Medicare gap program. Those are basically just programs that kind of fill the gap between um, what you're going to get from your Part A and your Part B Medicare. Most of the retirees over 65 typically use that in addition to, um, as I mentioned before, our Part D benefit that it's still around but you don't hear too much about it that really provides them with prescription um, drug um, benefits in that regard. And how much is that per person? It's um, uh, um, $1,400 um, $1, annually, sir. Okay. Mayor. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of City Council, as you're aware when we met um, last month, we called to your attention um, how we were working or going to work to try to increase um, our um, funding of our supplemental Portsmouth Supplemental Retirement Fund and our Portsmouth Fire and Police Retirement uh, System to ensure its um, long-term viability. We had our actuarial to come out of Boston and to present. These are two areas, which is the retirement allowance of the $2,400 a year um, that is before you um, to consider whether or not you want to discontinue it, um, reduce it, um, whatever your decision is, that money that is realized will go into the um, supplemental retirement fund payment that will help to continue to um, give longe longevity to the account. So I think first, if you all want to discuss the retirement allowance, and then we'll go to the HRA. So you gave us three options. One is continue it, one is to reduce it, and one is to eliminate it. Can you eliminate it over time? Can you ramp it down? So the, the, the retirement allowance? The health reimbursement. When we hadn't got to the uh, oh. health reimbursement yet. I'm talking about the retirement allowance. Okay, I was thinking HRA. I apologize. Right, just the retirement allowance. That's the 2,400 that um, <coughs> she gave the number of employees that received that a year, and that has been in effect since. Um, go back in I believe team. 1973, 1975, around about that time. It, initially, when it was offered, it was $100, and then it got increased to $200. In, in the 90s, it got increased yes. to the 200 That's only for people <coughs> within our two closed systems? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Are you asking for um, what's the thinking of council? Yes, that's what okay. we'd all like right. to. That's what we said we were going to come back to you all with. All right. <coughs> How do you all feel about this? <coughs> Why do we need to change it at all? I mean, is this the recommendation from the actuarial, really, from out of Boston, for us to save money on the other end? 
I believe it was, uh, we're pretty much trying to provide some options as uh, it was previously discussed that our retirement contributions that we're going to need to make continuously into our closed retirement systems, the fire and police and the Portsmouth Supplemental Retirement System, we were looking to um, use additional dollars to help offset that increase that is upcoming to keep our fund um, soluble, for lack of a better word. Yeah. Well, I know we're talking about the $200 now, but uh, uh, the HRA, when we're talking about savings, you know, it, it, it's interesting when we talk about, uh, uh, you know, contributions, we, we always talk about uh, uh, it, it's uh, in perpetuity uh, going forward, but the, the savings can be also ongoing. And when the retirees came out of the, uh, uh, the city's health system, that that liability w was pretty substantial that they saved the city. Uh, I, I forget the exact amount, but I think it was uh, above five hundred thousand uh, uh, dollars. It was in the millions. Uh, it was in the millions. So you're talking about um, our OPEB but, but liability. My, my point is that that's not a one-time savings. That that goes on. No. That's reoccurring savings, and, and instead of. Uh, uh, you know, doing away with the $2,400, uh, I'm asking tonight, the Mayor, I'd like to have a consensus for this, that we give the, uh, the public safety folks, uh, the widows and the widowers, uh, $100 per month uh, increase effective July the 1st of 2019. And, you know, I know the uh, city manager addressed uh, poverty how the city is putting forth uh, money to lift the boats of those that are earnings are uh, at or below the poverty level in the city. But well, we got retirees that, that when they retired through no fault of their own, uh, uh, things were a whole lot different then. Uh, salaries were, were uh, uh, extremely low. In, in the uh, case of the public safety, especially firefighters, uh, a lot of them had to go out and buy their own gear, their turnout gear, uh, at, at that point in time. Uh, you know, nowadays uh, that's unheard of. Also, we all have gotten information about the incidence uh, of cancer uh, due to uh, the conditions that they worked under at that point in time. And uh, so I, I'm asking, uh, Mayor, I'd like to have a consensus that we uh, we do the right thing by these folks <coughs> and uh, give them a hundred dollars. Uh, uh, per month. Is that the letter that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, everybody's got a letter in front of them. We've got two questions before. So, question asked by the city manager and a question proposed by Bill. Can we take them one at a time? Sure. I yeah. have two. And I have two questions. Well, yours, your two is right. what to do with the retirement allowance. And, and then I was going to speak. I was going to speak to the health. health. Re reimbursement account. Why don't you speak so we can okay. get it all? Um, with the health reimbursement account, there are options uh, staff recommends for city council consideration to continue the plan as stated, reduce the annual contribution over a three to five year period, or terminate the plan effective at the end of the plan year, December 31, 2019. It's the same. All right. Any questions of the city manager? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have actually three questions. Yeah. What to do with retirement allowance, what to do with the health reimbursement account, and what to do with um, Bill's question that he's proposed. Let's take, um, let's take them in that order, retirement Can allowance. Can we refresh me on what, what that $1,200 per retiree? So, I don't HRA. HRA. It's 14. It's 1400 for the yeah. for the HR. Sorry. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That bills. Hundred dollars. Hundred dollars a month. That's a hundred dollars a month to widows and widow, uh, widowers of uh, public safety. You're only talking about widows and widowers. You're not talking about the actual employees. Uh, I, I'm talking about retirees, widows and uh, widowers. Everybody. Yeah. In fact, there's a sheet in front of you. I know, but I'm uh, just trying to. Yes. Right. Okay. So. Yes. So is that the some million dollar figure that you showed us? Uh, I'll let Mr. Speak. Mm -hmm. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council, just from a logistical standpoint, 
your retirement system is set up on a percentage growth. That's why last month the actuary spoke about percentages. Um, I think I've had a conversation with at least one council member. Um, the, the difficulty, the, there is no mechanism to do $100. Um, and when you uh, address this by a percentage across the board for uh, retirees, you're going to have some ripple effects in terms of your uh, liabilities. But I just want to make sure when, when in the past we've talked about supplements and, you know, keeping in mind the discussion we had last month, that do, doing $100, there's a way to, to accomplish that. When you're talking about within the system, you're talking a percentage and there's no particular way to get a hundred dollars to well, one the, or the, the other. The percentage, I'm sure our CFO has the ability to convert that as close as possible to a percentage well, well, increase. Well, that will have, and then this was my comment to council member, that will have, in some respects, not a progressive effect because your former fire chiefs will get a percentage of their salary while you're what, but that can be converted to what, what, whatever that percentage takes uh, to equate to a hundred dollars. Well, I think what the attorney's saying is I, I know what he's saying. Right, and I you know and I agree the the point where you're trying to get a hundred dollars across the board because that's the fairest way because somebody that hired left at a high salary if you convert it to a percentage the people that you're trying to help, their, their poverty won't get as much mm -hmm. and they'll benefit more. Right. So that was the point of the dollar amount as opposed to the percentage. Right. And, and we, it, believe me, it is possible to do a dollar amount, whatever that, that percentage is. Can we take this in a methodical way? It would make sense to me. It, it, it seems like what you want to do is take whatever if we reduce, I'm going to pick, the, pick on the HRA, let's say that we reduce it by half instead of seven, 1400 700 you would take that 700 and put it into the retirement fund. Contribution. Right. Yes. Okay. To help contribute okay. additional I think it would money. be helpful to lay this out in writing and send it out so that we can look at it and digest it. Um, Speak to speak to Bill's a point about can you convert it to a percent? How much was what does this proposal cost? What impact does it have on the retirement, retirement fund? fund. Mm -hmm. it, it, okay. To me, it would help me okay. to get that information. Okay. Well, yeah, it would definitely help to get information out. You know, when that because that's a different issue with dollar amounts. But to me, these two issues here are very clear. These, you know, were the benefits that they were given. Another thing is, like the first one, retirement allowance, that ends when they're 65. But if they are under the city health care, when they turn 65, they would stop getting that and they would quit being on the health care. So when somebody met that age, there would be a lot of savings to the city because no matter what, when you turn 65, you're not allowed to participate mm -hmm. with the health insurance through the city. Right. Yeah, and that's a good point. Um, and if you were to twist my arm and say, which one do you prefer tonight? Mm -hmm. I would say prefer doing something with an HRA and ramping it down as opposed to the first one because of the promise that was made at the time of employment that you'll get this. And I think that you have to. And the cost of insurance is so much higher before you're 65. Yeah. No <coughs> um, matter where you're getting it. But I think there was a consensus that we asked the city manager to break this down, give us what the alternatives are, and get the cost for Bill's proposal. And we'll put it on the session for the next council meeting. Yeah. Is that a, mm -hmm. That's helpful. Is yes. that an agreement? Yeah. Along with the cost, how to implement the the a uh, hundred dollars uh, to uh, Nathan's point? Uh, don't want to do a percentage with somebody retired at uh, you know say eighty thousand dollars. That their, their percentage can be much more than 
uh, your average uh, firefighter or, or police officer. And I saw a nod, nod from everybody. I didn't see Paul. Yes. Paul, are you comfortable with that? Asking that information on the city? Yes. yes. Yeah. And I would just add, I mean, when I sat down with Attorney Ashby being a, a liaison to the retirement board, perhaps it may be beneficial for all of us also to sit down as a group to understand exactly what the funding is, what the liability is, because I think I, I had questions, and I assumed that if I had questions, others that are similarly situated may have had questions too. And I think it's important as we talk through these guiding principles and these things that impact our citizens that we understand what we're doing in terms of the decision-making process. But also, once we understand, it can, it can enable us to be and speak with one voice. I think John Hancock uh, did a just, pretty darn good job. Uh, yeah, he's saying John Hancock uh, just came last month. That presentation was uh, about as good as you can get. Yeah. But, but there still seems to be questions. All I'm, all I'm suggesting is, is that we all maybe uh, confer and understand exactly what is at stake. Because as we just mm -hmm. listened, there are still questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you want explained? What do you want explained? Oh, I, I, I pretty much I understand it. Yeah. I, mean, I think oh, they, you understand they, it all? If they give it to oh, us no like problem. they have it. No, sir. Okay. I think the request is that if we have it in writing, because the understanding is that we're trying to realize some cost savings someplace between these two, and if these are for both for retiring persons at age 65, at what rate are we retiring people off, moving people off, at what rate are the people reaching age 65 and the money is being saved anyway? So um, I have my answer, but if we get something in writing, then, you well, know. I think that's what... Uh, uh, the mayor suggested that yeah. the uh, city manager get back, uh, show Dr. us some writing. What it is, Dr. Pat. Mayor, um, I was. I'm just sitting here thinking, and uh, there have been two sessions when we brought the actuary in. We came to you all before we brought the actuary in to share with you all what we were facing as it pertained to the retirement fund. <coughs> the 125 million we have, we're paying out 30 million, and what's the life of the fund if we continue in this direction? And it's averaged out 10 years, whereas the actual actuarial shows people who are in this, who are in those two retirement systems now, and the 40 who will eventually go in who are active, we're looking for this fund to go out to 20, almost 91. So we have got to do what it takes to make sure there's money to go out to 2091. And right now we're looking at, we're paying 30 million plus out, we're bringing in 20 million, and we're gonna to continue to pay 30 million and more out, but we've gotta decide what's going to happen if we don't boost this to keep it out to the year that the last person in the system um, expires. And, and the last saying. question I have, I believe if, if, if my recollection is correct, we did discuss looking into, I guess the state has a larger fund. Mm -hmm. The state has a pool fund for OPEB that, okay. that the OPEB okay. okay. benefits are into. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're and, in there. And that, that, is, uh, that is where we contribute our OPEB uh, expense or allotment into for that benefit. So that's a larger pool that is not available for our retirement system. Did you all check that? Yes. Yeah, we're okay, in very good. Thank you. All right, so the city manager is going to get back to us, and we'll have it on the next session. Yes, sir. If we're losing money uh, with the retirement system, is it just because there's so many people? Is this something that just started? Or is this something that has been going on for a while? If it's an investment situation and we are not getting the yield to maintain the 30 million, maybe we need to think about getting a new investor. Well, it's never been fully funded. That's the problem. 
It got as low as 28 percent, 32 percent, which um, mm -hmm. is nearly bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's it's a problem that we've inherited, Paul. But if we're needing 30 million, mm -hmm. and the only thing we can get is 20 million a year with our investments, at some point we were getting 30 million. Again, maybe we need to look at another investor. I don't think that we've ever gotten 30 million. Yeah, um, no, we're paying out. Yeah. It might be useful to have the investment manager brief counsel sometime in the future. In the future, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think with some changes, uh, they have more flexibility now than they, they, did. Mm -hmm. they did in the yeah. past. Was, so that. Uh, Mm -hmm. That helps them take uh, advantage uh, of, uh, the, of the ups in the market. Uh, what we heard last council meeting was that the market on the whole in 2018 Died. was bad. Mm -hmm. It was down 5 percent on the average. We actually made money. We beat the market. Mm -hmm. but we didn't meet our goal. Mm -hmm. right. Our goal is 7 and, and a quarter. Right. Well, we, we met our goal some in the past. But it seems as if we are not being as consistent as we need to be. So when, if that's the case, we really need to look at uh, a different investor, a different type, and things like that. Your point is very well taken. Um, at 28% funding, though, it, it, you'd have to have unbelievable returns in order to get gold. Mm. Yeah. That's the problem. We're not... We don't have it. Yeah. We, our Nobody corpus can. is not big enough. But I think... Do we, do we have a direction that we've asked the city manager we'll to back yes. get back mm -hmm. on yes. these alternatives right. and to schedule in the future a briefing by the investment I have that down and we'll get with the, uh, the retirement board on that. Three years ago, we were about 77% solvent. Um, with good investments during that time, we could uh, get a pretty good spot now. When we bought the funds to make the program solvent a few years ago. All right. All right, that, that completes the presentation. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He has one more casinos. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of City Council, I want to take this opportunity uh, to uh, speak about the most recent news as it relates to the casino legislation. As you may know, uh, the uh, Senate Bill 1126, sponsored by uh, Senator Louise Lucas, has been uh, executed by the governor, uh, permitting the uh, Joint Legislative and Audit Review Committee to do a study, first and foremost, on the viability of gaming throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. As part of that uh, bill, it allows us to move forward and uh, gaming, casino gaming remains on track, no pun intended. Uh, we have now the opportunity, as the state takes up the uh, study, they will evaluate gaming throughout the Commonwealth, uh, the taxation schemes, the opportunities in the city of Portsmouth, and the development uh, that we have proposed here in the city. And so with that, as the senator dips her head in, uh, we uh, certainly want to applaud the governor on moving this forward so that we can certainly take up this issue uh, as we go forward and, and further develop and consult with individuals to bring forward the development here in the city of Portsmouth. Uh, I just wanted to make you all aware of that. This process is going to be ongoing. We'll certainly have some milestones we need to hit uh, in the next legislative session, but uh, city staff, economic development is moving forward with regard to uh, casino gaming and its uh, opportunities for development here in the city of Portsmouth. Any questions? Any questions? 
Okay. It's the manager's report. Uh -huh. uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of City Council, you have um, seven items that are on your um, City Manager's report tonight. The first is the Family Partnership Meeting Incentive Fund. Um, adoption of an ordinance accepting funding from the Virginia Department of Social Services in the amount of $1,800 and appropriating said amount in the FY 2019 Social Services Fund for the Family Partnership Meeting Incentive Program. <coughs> the next is the Neighborhood Incentive Fund and the Neighborhood Incentive Grant for Port Norfolk, Wilson Ward, and Shea Terrace Civic Leagues. Adoption of an ordinance accepting funds from the Port Norfolk, Wilson Ward, and Shea Terrace Civic Leagues in the amount of $3,088.75 and appropriating said amount in the FY 2019 General Fund for use by the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Leisure Services in the Neighborhood Incentive Grant Program. Adoption, the next is a FY 2019 Notice of Award for Virginia State Opioid Response SOR Prevention Award. Adoption of an ordinance accepting an opioid response prevention award in the amount of 15,000 from the Virginia Office of Behavioral Health Wellness and Appropriation said funds in the FY 2019 Behavioral Health Care Services Fund for use by the Department of VHS to address opioid mis uh, misuse. <laughs> the next is an unappropriating of $126,908 from the FY 2019 PPS grant fund. This is an adoption of an ordinance to amend ordinance 2018-95 to rescind the adoption, the appropriation of $126,908 from the FY 2019 Portsmouth Public Schools grant fund. The next is an adoption of a resolution approving the 2019 edition of the emergency operation plan for the city of Portsmouth, and you all have received copies of that plan at the last meeting. Uh, the economic development access road project for the former BASF site area. It's adoption of a resolution authorizing and supporting submission of an application for participation in the Virginia Department of Transportation Economic Development Access Program. To give you some background, the Economic Development Access Program provides funding to create adequate roadway access for potential economic development sites. Adequate access may require the construction of a new roadway, improvement of an existing roadway, or both to serve the designated site. Council previously authorized submission of an application for participation in this program for the area of the BASF site by resolution R-18-16, adopted on July 24, 2018. However, VDOC subsequently modified the program guidelines to require additional verbiage in application resolutions, including language specifying acknowledging that local match funding is required and language regarding the locality's intent to add any new roads to the local system for the purpose of receiving annual VDOC maintenance funds. The financial impact, the estimated project will cost $1,930,000. The maximum state allocation within the fiscal year is $500,000 unmatched. An additional $150,000 in state funds may be allocated with matching local funds. The City of Portsmouth will be requesting $650,000, and the City team may apply for additional funds through other grant programs. The last is the conveyance of 146 Orange Street, adoption of a resolution declaring a certain city-owned property having a size approximately 500th of an acre and and an address of 146 Orange Street, tax parcel 0052-0590 to be surplus real property and authorizing the conveyance of the same to Brandon uh, yep, John. Those okay. concludes the seven. Staying with the agenda, we have two special presentations. One is the continuance of the recognition of the foster parents, families, and you'll ask the, I'll call on you, and you'll ask the director of social services to come. Yes. So what, yes, Mrs. It. Littlehill. And then the recognition of Delta Day, and that's not my understanding, in keeping with our tradition, I'll invite Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Rogers, Rogers. Mm -hmm. who's the president, to come to the lectern so that we can recognize uh, 
or thousands. Uh, we have a public hearing, which has um, been advertised. We have the consent agenda, which has an ordinance and a resolution. Because it's a consent agenda, we can handle this with one motion to approve both. Is that correct, Mr. City Attorney? That's correct, Mayor. Okay. Anybody want to separate them? Okay. All right. Then I have two uh, items to report back. Um, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of, your council, uh, members of council, you have two items in the box. One is the public utilities water, sewer, and sewage disposal disconnection of service. This report is a response to your March 11 request of the city manager and city attorney to examine the city code sections regarding water cutoffs as it pertains to disconnection of water services for non-payment. The second is a primer on how to read a municipal budget. Uh, is also in the box in preparation for the FY 2020 budget review meetings uh, that are beginning to be scheduled for next week, which is the off week of city council. And you have not only the off week between the ninth, the eighth and the ninth meeting, but that additional week would be weeks that council will come in and the budget team will review all aspects of the budget with you. In the past, uh, council grouped in twos. Uh, because it's about an um, hour and a half or so uh, meeting. Um, uh, Mrs. S Simmons and Mr. Moody uh, would team on the Wednesday, which is usually the day that Mr. Moody has his meeting. And Mr. Clark and Mrs. Um, uh, Vice Mayor Lucas Burke team on the Thursday, which is her meeting, but sometimes if Mr. Clark's Friday, was not available on Thursday, they would do the Friday. And then uh, with our newest council members, um, Mr. Um, Councilman Glover and Councilman Battle, if it is in concurrence with you, we will uh, schedule you all together. That will go out to you all next week. I mean this week, so you'll know for next week. Okay. okay. Uh, council liaison reports, we'll start with Janet. I don't have any updates at this time. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, last Thursday evening we had the uh, parking, uh, parking Authority meeting. Uh, one of the things we were discussing was talking about the reconstruction of the County Street Garage, but some of that's been kind of put on hold because that property is also being talked about in the unsolicited proposal. Uh, we've had one member resign since our last meeting, and we have a, another member that we're going to have to look at the attendance record. So uh, we're definitely going to be looking for one more to join and possibly two more for the board. That's it. Uh, yes, uh, let's see. The Planning Commission is still in need of a commissioner. They are down one commissioner, so they did inquire about when that um, may occur. Um, PRHA commissioners um, passed two resolutions. One um, is going to be some new flooring putting at the Phoebus Square uh, facility. It's going to be with Continental Flooring through an RFP bid. Um, the other resolution is going to allow them uh, to uh, execute a contract for a financial advisor uh, services with Herrera uh, Associates. Um, and just to let you know, the Seaboard Commons um, development is on track, and you should be hearing more uh, information on that soon. Thank you. May I ask a, ask a question, Vice Mayor? Yeah. Um, for the vacancy on the Planning Commission, yes. um, I, I have someone I would like to submit. Do okay. I submit that through? The Planning, uh, the Personnel Committee, which is the Mayor and okay. Councilman Moody. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, uh, attended the March 19th uh, meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission. They had a, a, a roof uh, application and a window replacement uh, application. Also attended the March 12th uh, closed meeting of the uh, uh, PPIC. And uh, of course today we had a tour of the shipyard. Uh, I'll call it the Portsmouth Shipyard, <laughs> uh, and uh, it was quite uh, enlightening. Uh, you might want to elaborate a little more on that, Mayor. I thought it was a good opportunity. What the PPIC would like to do with the Navy, they met with uh, Admiral Rock, who is the uh, Navy's commander for all the facilities on um, Mid-Atlantic. Uh, the surplus, the shipyard has property that's not being utilized, has been utilized for uh, several decades. That's what they call the South Gate, mm -hmm. which is south of the jo Jordan Bridge. They're 
um, A through F finger piers that jut out into the southern branch of the Elizabeth River. And so they were working with us to see if there could be some type of use uh, that could, would be mutually beneficial to them and to, to the city. Um, I attended the Community Service Board's uh, meeting, and um, uh, one of the changes that they've made uh, to operate better is um, substance abusers who usually would, in the past, would come in, would always complain or leave prematurely because of the intake system. Uh, they've narrowed it down to uh, five minutes for the intake system, mm -hmm. and they're um, uh, trying to, at this point, develop a blast out that will let those folk in need know that uh, it has been uh, developed a better uh, intake system and see if they can get them in there. Um, uh, the Historical Society I attended their meeting. They're going to have a contest um, with the citizens of Portsmouth. Um, it will be done online. It will deal with history of the city of Portsmouth's history. And um, I, it's, they're going to give out uh, prizes to the winners. Uh, so we're really excited. We'll, at the next meeting, we'll get the uh, parameters of the dates. Um, I went to um, uh, what's the Department of um, Social Services, I think it was, and um, they've expanded their services and they put an em emphasis on family self-sufficiency. And they are real proud of the um, participation and the uh, development of the citizens in that program. Thank you. Mm -hmm. with I'll give my report. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> we have a need for a closed session. Is there a motion? So move. No. You just got to be read. Okay, okay I'll, I'll, read, I'll, I'll move. I'll read the motion. This one? Yes. This one? Yes, I okay. have it. Mm -hmm. I move to go into closed session. A pursuant to Virginia Code subsection 2.2-3711 A.3 for the purpose of discussing the acquisition and disposition of real property where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiation negotiating strategy of the public body, specifically regarding the victory crossing area. And B pursuant to Virginia Code, subsection 2.2-3711-A.3 for the purpose of discussing the disposition of publicly held or controlled real property where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body, specifically regarding Crawford Bay. And C, pursuant to Virginia Code, subsection 2.2-3711, a.1 for the purpose of discussing or considering the performance, the performance of city council appointees and Virginia Code subsection 2.2-3711A.8 for the purpose of consultation with legal counsel employed or retained by a public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel and D pursuant to Virginia Code subsection 2.2-3711A.8.8 for the purpose of consultation with legal counsel employed or returned, retained by the public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel, specifically regarding the city attorney's regular report to city council on the activities of his office, including pending litigation and potential litigation. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? Um, I will be recusing myself on item A, so I don't know what order we want to take them on. Well, let's if we, take it A. We'll okay. do A first. Okay. Then I'll, then we'll call then I'll back go back out. out. Okay. okay. Um, so, thank you for, for that. 
And you're recusing because of a potential uh, family um, ownership in this development. And you'll note that the fact that, that she did not participate in that portion. Yes, sir. Will you call the roll, please? Yes, motion sir. Motion is to uh, approve the motion. Mr. Battle? Yes. Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Glover? Yes. Mrs. Lucasburg? Yes. Mr. Moody? Yes. Ms. Simmons? Yes. Mayor Rowe? Yes. We're in closed session. Those that are not.